Benchmarks. Are they fuel for programmer flame wars or useful measurements for optimizing a system? As with everything in software, it depends. I spent a few hours getting the right configurations and flags in place to demonstrate how to benchmark code on the beam. Along the way, I'll show what metrics are available. As a quick hint, it's more than just execution time. Also, if you've been curious about how the built-in JSON support in OTP27 compares to existing JSON libraries, like some folks on Reddit were, stick around. As with every video, code can be found below with a link in the description. To be clear, I'm referring to micro benchmarks, measuring little functions that do one thing. These functions tend to be important when a program calls them thousands, millions, or even more times. They're those functions where microseconds add up to real observable time in aggregate. But keep in mind, benchmarks are only as good as you make them. It's important to test across multiple types of input, vary the shapes and sizes to get a more broad understanding of how a function actually compares. Benchmarks also aren't a substitute for real-world tracing and observability. It's not likely for a production server to just be running a single function over and over with no competition, and the inputs of real data may have implications on runtime performance that synthetic inputs just can't match. In the Elixir and Elixir-adjacent community, Benchy is the most common benchmarking library. It lets you run a set of functions to be compared, collecting metrics, and reporting the runtime differences between them. As a basic example of Benchy's interface, I'll compare two functions that just sum up the numbers from 1 to 100. One of these functions sleeps for a millisecond every time it runs to force some test results. Obviously, it'll be much slower than the non-sleeping version. When I run Benchy, it defaults to a two-second warm-up and then measures each function in a loop for five seconds. I mention this because Benchy has a ton of options that can be provided to the run function. Different durations, metrics, inputs, and even hooks to run before and after tests. All of these options are documented in the Benchy configuration modules page on Hexdocs. When I compare these two different results, it's no surprise that the one millisecond sleep caused an implementation that is 55,000 times slower than the one that doesn't sleep. Benchy also outputs average, deviation, median, and P99 numbers. Hopefully this shows how easy it is to get Benchy running using the defaults. But I want to go further. In a prior video, I shared that JSON support is now built into the Beam. This led to a natural question. How does the built-in support compare to other libraries already used by the community? I chose to compare JSON to the JSON library as well as Jiffy. You see, Jiffy is a native implemented function, or a NIF. This is a nifty way to call functions implemented in external languages like C, Rust, or more recently, Zig. NIFs are a pretty complicated topic. Just know that the work of encoding and decoding in Jiffy is done in optimized C code. This calling pattern is not without costs, but I'm curious to see if there are certain scenarios where it outperforms built-in support. Since Livebook doesn't yet support OTP27 or Elixir 1.17, which also hasn't been released yet, I had to jump through a bunch of dependency hoops that should be buffed out in the next few weeks. I wrote this sample notebook in a way that'll adapt to the version of OTP you have installed. So if you choose to run this yourself, it may only run JSON and Jiffy until the new updates are made available. So to test JSON encoding, I'll run a few benchmarks. We'll see how hard it is to encode a single object or arrays of objects with varying lengths to see if there are certain sizes where one implementation outshines the others. I'll get this started and we can take a look at how this data is being constructed. In these arrays, I put an incrementing ID so the objects in the array are a little bit different from each other. This probably isn't necessary, but a little paranoia about busting potential optimizations and benchmark setups goes a long way. So we can run the test. It estimated to run about a minute and 45 seconds since it has to run all five inputs across all three implementations. There is a parallel mode available, but these tasks are CPU heavy and so that might skew the results. I'll avoid it for today. The results of multi-input Benchy runs are not in the same order as they were declared in the map and I don't quite know a way around that. So we might need to scroll around a little bit. Unsurprisingly, the native JSON implementation is faster than JSON and Jiffy for a single object. But if I scroll up to 100 objects, Jiffy starts to take the lead. At 10,000 objects, Jiffy has a substantial lead over JSON and still a pretty good lead over native JSON. What I'm learning from this is that if I have a large data set, it might be worth the overhead of a NIF in order to run Jiffy. I can also see that native JSON is almost always faster than the JSON library, which makes sense because it's built in. There's another aspect of these packages that could be interesting. 
their performance in decoding a JSON string. For this one, I wanna show off a feature of Livebook, input elements. It's easy to create interactive notebooks using inputs exposed by the Kino library. This lets you add forms with numbers, file uploads, text areas, and buttons. In this example, I added a text area where I can dump any JSON I want as an input for benchmarking. This lets me experiment without needing to edit the code. There's also a way to turn notebooks into mini apps for use as internal tooling, but I haven't played around with that yet. I'll also use a Benchy plugin that does markdown formatting and a markdown Kino cell for this experiment's report. I'll paste in a reasonably large JSON document that I found on the internet and then run this benchmark. Once again, Jiffy wins with a large object. This can be seen in the report, which shows the data as well-formatted tables. Jiffy was two times faster than native JSON with this specific example. Okay, so most languages have utilities to benchmark the runtime of functions in a tight loop, but Benchy is able to dig a little bit deeper. If I go up to this example and add the memory time option, I'll set it to the number five, Benchy will dedicate that many seconds to testing the memory overhead of each implementation. So let's wait and see what it comes up with. All right, I'll scroll down to the memory usage comparison and well, the magnitude of these results is a little surprising, and I sure am skeptical. It's completely possible that Jiffy has so much lower of a memory overhead, like on a factor of 10 times, but it's equally possible that Jiffy's C implementation just allocates memory that the beam is unaware of. Trust me, there are good uses of Benchy's memory mode, they just don't typically involve NIFs. I'll show some examples in a little bit. But first, I wanna highlight the other exciting metric that Benchy exposes, reductions. Over its 40 year life, the Beam has accumulated many metrics and observation points that can be probed to determine how the system is running. One such metric is the reduction counter, which is incremented for each process when it gets foreground time to perform an operation against the system, typically a call to a function, whether it's built in, native, or one written in a Beam language. By counting reductions, we can get a more stable measure of effort that should be roughly the same whether you run it on a Raspberry Pi or a hefty server. But there's a problem. Just like with memory benchmarking, reduction counts can get understated in benchmarks. Since NIFs live in machine code outside of the beam, the counter can't be incremented based on the complexity of the operation. So in all, a call to a NIF will only cause a single reduction, even if it represents a lot of computation. For these reasons, I wanna benchmark something without even a whiff of NIFs. I pulled in three sorting algorithms from a site called Rosetta Code. Sources can be found by clicking on the link in the companion livebook. Notice that these are implemented entirely in Elixir. Since they don't reach out to another language, we're able to get a really good benchmark out of them. In this run, I'll omit a line that you might've noticed from previous examples, kino.nothing. This function tells livebook to ignore the result of the executed block. And I was using this to hide something from you. I apologize for the sleight of hand. You see, so far we've been doing this in hard mode having to read text output or markdown reports. But there's several other plugins for Benchy, outputting CSVs and even HTML with fancy box plots. But one plugin that I've recently started using is just for Livebook. It's called Kino Benchy. It's a Livebook renderer that provides tables and graphs with separate clickable tabs for runtime, memory, and reductions. It does this by implementing the Kino.render protocol for the Benchy suite result type. But all that you need to know is that it automatically makes any Benchy results get formatted in a special way if they're the last line of a Livebook block. Despite its interactivity, this plugin does have some limitations. Mainly, it doesn't gracefully handle suites which run multiple inputs. That being said, it's far ahead of looking at the text-based default output of Benchy. I'll give these algorithms a run and show the results. All right, so let's scroll down to these results and this looks a little bit different. So, Unsurprisingly, quick sort is way faster than selection sort and bubble sort. And we can also see that the memory utilization is substantially lower for quick sort, followed by selection sort and finally bubble sort. We can also look at the reduction counts and well, all of this stuff is gonna align because it all is different ways of measuring the same thing. So that's all I have to show of Benchy in Livebook, but I wanna point out that Benchy isn't just for Livebook. For example, I've used Benchy during the annual Advent of Code Challenge to measure the performance of my solutions to nightly coding problems. 
This idea didn't come from me, but rather from Mitchell Hamburg, the maker of the template that I use. In front of me, I've got an advent of code solution from 2023. And if I run it with a dash B flag, it'll run Benchy against what I've written. Behind the scenes, this flag is translated into a Benchy.run call. With advent of code, it's really important to get a solution quickly, but there's typically room for optimization or exploring multiple approaches. Benchy is ideal for identifying your most efficient way of solving the day's problem. Similarly, you could use it in tests to ensure the performance of a critical section of code doesn't dramatically degrade over time. Or you could use it during a refactor in response to production issues. Just make sure that you understand how what you're measuring compares to real-world data. There are tons of options and plugins to customize Benchy, but I'd like to think that I covered the most common surfaces. Hopefully, you can use this to make informed decisions when optimizing particularly hot areas of a code base. Or, at the very least, you can squeeze as much performance as you can during a particular holiday-themed event. The Beam has tons of hooks built in for introspecting its runtime characteristics, and interesting libraries to read those results out to you. I may showcase these in future videos. But for now, I wish you excellent Benchy scores. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.